I'm in the middle of a month-long Princess Mononoke costume making extravaganza, I guess. Uh, last week I showed you guys how to make the mask and her cape, and today I will be showing you how to make the many accessories that she wears. Let's get started. To make the armbands and headband, I used translucent polymer clay, iridescent shredded gift filler, jump rings, sandpaper or polishing pads, black paint, sculpey glaze, ribbon crimp ends, jewelry pliers, and black elastic. I wanted to try a technique on making opal beads, which I did by cutting up iridescent shredded filler and mixing it into the translucent clay. And then I shaped the beads into the desired shape. In this case, a sort of dome shape. To finish off the opal effect, you're supposed to cover the whole thing with an extremely thin layer of translucent clay, but I don't have a pasta machine for rolling out polymer clay, and I didn't feel like trying to roll it out that thin by hand, so I just attempted to flatten it enough with my fingers, which actually didn't work out as well as I would have hoped. It wasn't that big of a deal for me in this project, so I just kept going with what I had, but if I wanted to make it really look like opal, then I would have gone back and actually tried to hand roll it. Anyway, I went around the edges of the domes with a sculpting tool to add some detail, and then I stuck in some jump rings on either side of the bead, sticking them in about halfway. Then I baked the clay according to the directions. Once baked and cooled, I used some fine wet sandpaper to sand down and polish the beads. This part is supposed to be when the opal effect starts to come out, but I think my thin layer of translucent clay was actually too thick, so the iridescent flex didn't really come through that much. Anyway, I painted the edges black and sealed the beads with polymer clay sealer. I measured around my upper arm and my head. I subtracted about an inch from these measurements, and I cut two pieces of elastic for my arms and one for my head. Then I simply added ribbon crimps onto the ends of the elastic, and then I connected the beads onto the straps. The earrings are made a little differently. I wanted to try to mimic the same look as San's earrings instead of just making some round dangle earrings. And I also have stretched piercings, so I had to make them so that they could fit my ears. For these, I just used translucent and pearl polymer clay, an X-Acto knife, calipers, and sandpaper. If you want to make these for non-stretched ears, then you would probably need some earring posts and two-part epoxy. I layered the translucent clay with the pearl clay a few times, and then I lightly mixed them together. I wanted the effect of them being slightly swirled together and not completely mixed in. I rolled out the clay into large circles, about one fourth of an inch thick. I used the calipers to measure the tunnels that I always wear, and with these calipers, I marked from the edge of the circle with the measurement that I just got from my tunnels. Then I cut out a shape that looked something like this. I tried to make sure that there was enough of a gap right here that I would be able to stick my earlobe in, and that this part was long enough to go through my ear with a little bit hanging out. I smoothed out the part that would go through my ear and repeated it to make a second piece, and then I baked them. If I were making these for normal piercings, not stretched piercings, I probably would cut it to look something like this, a U shape, and then I would probably just glue on the earring post right here. Anyway, after baking, I wet sanded them to smooth them out. When wearing these, I like to wear silicone tunnels first, and then stick the piercings through those. To make the toothed necklace that goes with the cape, I used white polymer clay, four brown beads, and yarn. I made three tooth-like shapes with clay, and then I poked a hole through the tops of all three and baked according to the directions. I cut a length of yarn to stretch from shoulder to shoulder, and I tied one end to make a loop that would be big enough to attach onto the button on the cape. And then I threaded on, alternating a wooden bead and a tooth, until I got to the end, and then I tied another loop onto this end. I also decided to make the crystal dagger, and to do this I used polymer clay, mold putty, easy cast resin, blue colorant, 
I actually used acrylic ink, sandpaper, clear sealer, a hot glue gun, leather cording, and red leather strips. First I used polymer clay and made the shape that I wanted for the crystal dagger. Then I baked the clay, then I used the mold putty according to the directions to make a mold of the polymer clay. I tried to make it so I wouldn't have to cut into the mold to remove my clay piece, but it actually kind of stuck in there really well, so I did have to go and cut about halfway down on each side so that I was able to remove it. I used some hair ties to help close it back up, and then I mixed the resin together, I added the colorant, and poured that into the mold. Then I just had to wait for it to cure. This took about one to two days. When it was totally cured, I took it out of the mold and started wet sanding the piece to make it super smooth. It actually didn't get as smooth as I wanted because there were a lot of bubbles in the resin, so I ended up painting a layer of clear acrylic sealer, and that seemed to help a lot. Then I wrapped the top with some red leather, and then with some leather cording, that was long enough to go around my neck, and then I just tied the end up, and it was done. And here's everything all put together. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. I post art videos every Tuesday and DIY videos every Thursday. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest, and I'll leave the information to those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below. And don't forget, Next week, I will be showing you how to make her weapons. So, I'll see you then.